easy to forget how good wide receiver Justin Ross was in college as he went undrafted in 2022 and couldn't play due to injury. Ross led the ACC in receiving as a freshman in 2018, ranked 5th nationally with 21.7 yards per catch, and was 2nd in receiving touchdowns. Back then, Ross was seen as a first round talent. However, injuries took a toll on him and he missed the entire 2020 college season. It was during this time frame where doctors discovered Ross was born with a congenital fusion in his spine, a condition that calls for the avoidance of physical activities like football that can cause neck injuries. There will always be concern about Ross's long-term health, but no one can ever question his talent. What's up though guys, Swag here back, and today we're talking about the Kenny City Chiefs becoming even scarier. But before we get into today's video, if you're a fan of the Chiefs and you come to the right place because I upload every single day. So if that's of interest for you, smash the like button. It only takes a second and also subscribe to our channel as it would help me chase my dreams of doing this full time. Okay, let's get into today's video. So here's what offensive coordinator Matt Nagy had to say about the Chiefs insane receiver corps. Quote, I think it's going to be fun this preseason to see the amount of players and competition that we have in that room. They all come in different sizes and quote, Standing at six foot three, Justin Ross has seen significant time with the first team in camp due to Katerius Tony having had surgery to repair a partially torn meniscus in his knee on Tuesday morning. Andy Reid did speak to the media and said that he hopes that Tony's back for week one. End of the day, we really just don't know. The thing with Tony is that he is a terrific talent. One of my guys, if he's watching this, Will Upton sent me a message and said it's Tony season. And I mean, I was going to say funny enough, there's nothing funny, obviously, about an injury, but Tony would get injured like right after that and of course is out yes we know Tony has wide receiver one potential of course in the Super Bowl he had arguably the greatest punt return in history but the thing is the Chiefs have been monitoring his snaps which is the reason why he was even playing in that game because they're keeping his snaps down but Tony his rookie season he missed six games and last season he was limited to just nine games so that's the thing with Tony is that yes he has all the potential in the world but you still need depth which is why the Chiefs went out there and they drafted Rasheed Rice. Of course, last year in the draft, they went out and they got Sky Moore. Justin Watson's back. They brought in that receiver from the Giants, Richie James, who's coming off of a career year. I like what the Chiefs are doing. I like how they traded Tyree Kill. I made a video right after they did that and said I loved it. They saved money, more flexibility, get some new guys in, spread the ball around. Judas Schuster, they let go, who went to the Patriots, got paid a ton of money, wishing nothing but the best. MBS is still here. And here's the thing with... Uh, Marquez Valdez Scantling, right? So he leads all returning Chiefs receivers and targets with 81, 42 receptions, and 687 yards. But if you look at it, obviously Travis Kelsey had more catches last year than MBS. It's Travis Kelsey. Jarek McKinnon also had more catches. And then in terms of Sky Moore, who I did think had a promising rookie year, well, the backup tight end Noah Gray had more receptions than more. So it goes to show that the Chiefs, it's going to be very difficult for them to have all of these young receivers and to get them up to speed because it's the NFL, but it's also the Chiefs offense. I mean, this is not an easy offense to learn. You look at Tyreek Hill and Hardman, yeah, they had good rookie seasons, but in terms of being a wide receiver one, not exactly gonna happen, right? So that's why I personally would have loved DeAndre Hopkins, but the Chiefs just didn't really have much of a reason to bring him in because they just won a Super Bowl without a guy like DeAndre Hopkins and they still have to build around the defense. Chris Jones hasn't been paid yet, so I get that. But I am looking at the Chiefs and I'm saying that they have a top three offensive line in the league. They did, of course, end up losing one of their tackles, but they brought in Donovan Smith, who, when healthy, is honestly a better player, of course. And they still have Isaiah Pacheco, who is on a rookie contract. He's only going to get better. Jerry McKinnon's back. CH is probably going to end up being cut, which is unfortunate that he hasn't been able to stay healthy. He's got all the talent in the world, of course, coming out of LSU. It really sucks about that. Mahomes, greatest quarterback talent we've ever seen. I mean, there's nothing he can't do on a football field. We saw him on a sprained ankle in the Super Bowl, and he was pressured a ton and was never brought down. You got to give credit to the Chiefs offensive line, but Mahomes, his ability to just maneuver the pocket and get rid of the ball was honestly mesmerizing. So yeah, the Chiefs are definitely going to be better next season. I know that the group, of course, talking about Spags and everyone, they've been talking about how the goal is to be a top 10 defense, which is why I'm saying that the Chiefs are going to be even better because last season, they definitely didn't have a mediocre defense. They had a pretty damn good defense, especially in the playoffs. 
but it's only going to improve. It was very young. The Chiefs were starting as many rookies as anyone else. A lot of people don't realize that. You know, casual football fans, they're going to look at the Chiefs and be like, oh, this is a pretty old roster. Not the case. They're one of the youngest teams in the league. So they're going to continue to develop, continue to get better. And I'm looking at the Chiefs and I'm saying that, I mean, of course, they have a ton of new weapons, but they'd have to get this situation figured out with Chris Jones because we're already through the first week of training camp and Chris Jones has not been in attendance. The reason why he hasn't been is because he's trying to get paid. And when I say he's trying to get paid, I'm talking about an Aaron Donald type of contract. So Donald makes about $31.7 million annually. The next closest player is Quinnen Williams, who makes $24 million. And Quinnen Williams, he's not as good as Chris Jones, but he did receive a Defensive Player of the Year vote for the Jets last season, so he's a very good player. So Chris Jones is going to be making something close to Donald's record-breaking contract. You can make the argument that, hang on a second here, the Chiefs traded Tyree Kill, he was trying to get paid. And yes, that makes sense, but Tyree Kill is not as important to the Chiefs as Chris Jones. If Chris Jones was not on the Chiefs last year, they certainly do not win the Super Bowl, even if Tyreek Hill was. There's no debate about that. And if Chris Jones is not on the Chiefs even next season, are they going to win the Super Bowl? Probably not, right? I mean, Jones is extremely important. He dominated that Bengals game. He's one of the best 10 defensive players in football. I mean, he's that good of a player. So it's important to get Jones paid. He is being fined $50,000 a day that he doesn't show up which is just ridiculous. I mean, $50,000 to me is for and you guys, most of you guys watching this right now, 50K is a lot of bread, bro. And Jones is just not showing up and it's getting fine, but hopefully he gets paid. Experts are saying that it's going to be between 27 to 30 million a year. That is a lot of money, but if anyone is worthy of that, it is going to be Chris Jones. So I want to end the video on this. Let's talk about the Kansas City Chiefs doing something that hasn't been done since 2005. And that is winning back to back Super Bowls. The reason why I think the Chiefs are going to do this, and it's crazy because every time a team wins a Super Bowl, I never even think about picking them to go back to back. It just doesn't happen again since 2005 when New England did it. But there's something about the Chiefs where I already picked them to win it last year on record. And this year, I just don't see anyone beating them. Like, I can't think of a team right now at the top of my head that I even think can compete with the Chiefs. I mean, sure, the Chiefs are going to lose a couple of games, but when it's you know, said and done, who's going to be holding up that trophy? It's going to be Patrick Mahomes, Andy Reid, Kelsey, and these guys. I mean, I'm thinking about the AFC, like the Bengals. I just, the Bengals haven't really done much this offseason because they're prepping to Pacey Higgins and Joe Burrow. Patrick Mahomes is on, I don't know his exact contract, but it doesn't matter how much Mahomes make. It's going to be a team-friendly contract. It's Patrick Mahomes, but because Mahomes, he's not the highest paid quarterback, obviously, and Justin Herbert, Jalen Hurts, Lamar, these guys are making more money, at least annually, but I think the reason why I like the Chiefs so much to win it again is because there's just no holes on their team. I mean, the defense is going to only improve. It looked good in the playoffs. It did enough to stop the Eagles. I mean, the Eagles had the second ranked offense, guys, so it did exactly what it was supposed to. It made a huge stop and Jalen Hurts that fumble, which honestly, that fumble was on Hurts for trying to switch hands and lost it, but still returning that for a touchdown. I mean, that gave them all the momentum. And for the Chiefs, their offensive line is just... I just love their all line. I mean, bringing in Donovan Smith, I mean, he's six foot six, 338 pounds. The last time we saw him have a healthy season, I don't remember his exact number, but it was, oh yeah, I do actually. It was 3.8% talking about his pass blocking pressure. So he only allowed one sack. That was back in 2021 when he was healthy. I mean, in 2020, when he was with the Bucks. They won the Super Bowl. We're not going to talk about that, but Smith started 19 games. So Orlando Brown Jr., I'm not going to say he's overrated. He's a multi-time Pro Bowler. He's a good player, but he was the weak link on the Chiefs offensive line in the playoffs. He gave up the highest pressure rate. So the Chiefs next season, look out. I am all in on the Chiefs. I already picked them, like I said, to win last year's Super Bowl, but I think they're going to be even better. And wow, I mean, the Chiefs win another Super Bowl. They are officially a dynasty. I mean, when was the last time you guys heard the word dynasty? I mean, Warriors is basketball, but in football, the Patriots, right? New England, the Chiefs, you can make the case they already are a dynasty, but if they get one more, once you get three, that would be their third Super Bowl in the last five years. I mean, that is a dynasty. That is, and football too is ridiculous, guys. It's your boy Swag. You can also find me over at Daily Chiefs. Have a blessed day. Yee.